Good evening, children. It's Granny McDuff, ready with a story. So make yourselves comfy, and I'll begin. Once upon a time, a mouse, a bird, and a sausage became friends and decided to become roommates. They had a good life and were very happy in each other's company. They worked together to provide for themselves and their home. Each of them had daily tasks they were to perform. The bird was tasked with flying into the forest and collecting wood for the fire. The mouse was to carry the water, light the fire, and set the table for dinner. And the sausage was tasked with the cooking. But it is true what they say. That he who is too well off is always longing for something new, something better. And so one day, when the bird met a sparrow on the way to collecting firewood, he told him of his wonderful life and boasted of his companions. The sparrow remarked that it seemed to him. The bird did the bulk of the work, and what a shame it was that his friends did not manage to carry the same weight. The bird insisted that the mouse and the sausage worked just as hard, and that they all had good times at home. He explained that in the evening, when the mouse had made the fire and carried her water, she would go into her room to rest until her friends called her to come and set the table. And the sausage sang little tunes while he stayed by the pot to make sure the food was cooking just right. And when it came time for dinner, he rolled himself once or twice in the vegetables to give them a bit of flavour. Then he threw in a pinch of salt, and dinner would be ready. And then, when the bird would come home and lay down the firewood, they would all sit to dinner. And after they had finished their meal, they would sleep and snore till the sun came up the next morning. What a splendid life it was! The sparrow told the bird, "Pish posh, sounds like a dreary life to me. What a shame you do so much more than your little friends!" And with that, he flew away. The next day, the bird, who had tossed and turned all night thinking about what the sparrow had said, was now convinced. That he truly did do more work than the others, and when he rose, he said to his roommates, "I am no fool. You've used me, and I shall have no more of it. I have been your servant long enough. I will not go to collect firewood today. We will arrange our tasks in another way, or I will leave." "Well, you've done no such thing," said the sausage. "I cook all day to feed us." And mouse runs about for water, lights the fire, since you're too scared to do so, and she sets our table while I wait at the pot. We all work together. We always have. Yes, cried the mouse. And why change something that's been running quite well? I shall not hear it, said the bird. My bags are packed. Am I to stay or go? The mouse and the sausage did not want the bird to leave. <sighs> but I shall gather the wood then," said the sausage. "I shall cook," said the mouse. "I've watched you enough times, sausage." And I shall fetch the water and set the table," said the bird. It seemed an agreement was once again made. But then what happened? I hear you ask. Well, the little sausage went out to the woods. The bird went to the river, and the mouse stayed by the pot. And so several days went by, and it seemed that things could possibly work just as they had before. Until one day, the little sausage did not return home when he usually did. The mouse and the bird waited for quite some time, but as soon as it was dusk, they began to worry. So the bird flew out to find him. Barely was he out the door. When he met a dog on the road, pardon me, but have you seen my friend, a little sausage? He would have been carrying some wood. Ah,、oh, replied the dog, tasty little one he was. 
the birds fluttered about. He could not believe what he had heard. You, you ate him? Swallowed him right up for my supper. I did. He's a sausage after all. Meant for eating. Ruff. You have robbed me of him. I shall report this. Believe me, I shall, cried the bird. Careful now, or I'll gobble you up for breakfast, Ruff, said the dog. The bird got one look at the dog's shiny, sharp teeth and flew away as fast as he could. When he arrived home, he locked the door and told the mouse all that had happened. I cannot believe it, cried the mouse. Oh, poor dear sausage. Yes, said the bird, and now we shall have to do our best, just the two of us. It is your fault, all of it. If we had left things just the way they were, all would have been fine. They argued for quite some time, until they both fell fast asleep. And in the morning, when the bird woke, he found himself quite alone. The mouse had packed up and left. Well then, he said, I shall just have to do it all myself. The bird went and collected the firewood. He brought it home and set it aside. Then he flew out to get the water. And when he was back, he set the fire and began to cook. He quickly found he had no idea how to cook. He had never really paid much attention to anything his companions did. The bird decided to put all the water and all the vegetables that were left into the pot. But not an hour had gone by while he stood at the pot that he felt so tired he thought he should have a nap. How did the sausage do this each day? It is quite tiresome, he thought. And flying to and fro and setting the table and lighting the fire? Whew, what a fearsome thing that is. He tried in vain to make himself a tasty supper. Instead, his meal was more a pile of mush. Certainly not tasty. But he was so very tired. He ate a bit and went straight to bed. This went on for some time, and each day it became more and more difficult for the bird to complete his tasks. Soon enough, he realised how truly sorry he was that he had ever been dissatisfied with what he and his friends had had. He learned to always be grateful for what he had and never to ask for too much in return. The End Good night, children. <laughs>